Hey everybody, it's Debbie O'Neill of Scrap Me Quick Designs. Thanks for joining me today. Today's video is going to be a tutorial video and it is a follow-up to the Christmas in July digital mystery box reveal video that I did earlier this month. Now in that mystery box there are three image sets and ten fonts. One of those image sets is by Jay Good and it is Trim the Tree. And you guys asked me if I would show you how to make the ball ornaments that are in there. So that's what today's video is going to be about. If you have Cricut Access, that digital image set will be available to you starting August the 23rd. Or if you don't have Cricut Access right now, you can purchase Cricut Access so you'll be ready to get it. Or you can just purchase the digital mystery box before August the 6th and you would get the image set, okay? So that's how the Im that's where these images came from. Now, there are three different balls on that image set that, and so I have picked two of them to show you how to make them. And the first one is going to be made using cardstock and the drawing feature and a Cricut pen, okay? So that's this one, awfully pretty. Think about it, you can make it whatever colors you want. Now, of course I couldn't stop there because I had to take that image file and kind of change it up a little bit. And I used holographic foil acetate and holographic vinyl and made this super sparkly shiny ornament to show you guys. And this one, we are going to do something completely different with it. If you have the Cricut Maker Machine, I show you how we're gonna use the debossing tool instead of the draw line on this particular ornament and some specialty papers from Cricut that work beautifully with the debossing tool. So those are the three ornaments we're gonna make. Now I will have all the supplies that I use that I show you in the video will be linked them in the description of this video. So if you wanna make along with me, I know it's only, it's still summer, but Christmas is gonna be here before we know it and we need to start making these now. So let me show you and inspire you how I made these. Okay, so let's take a look at the supplies that we're gonna to need to make that round ornament, paper ornament, and um, so you will need three sheets of cardstock. So I used a green, a white, and a red, but you use whatever color of choice you want. And you will need some type of a pen because we're going to do the drawing feature on this one. So I use the Cricut Gold Gel Tip Glitter Pen, okay? Or you could use the Cricut just gold, regular gold pen if you want. Or, of course, you can just use the regular black one that comes in your Cricut machine. What you're going to be doing with those is on this piece, you th this has a draw line on it. So that we're drawing a line around all of those shapes. The other things you're going to need, so you'll need the three sheets of cardstock. Of course, you'll need a Cricut mat and your Cricut machine, either the Cricut Explorer or the Cricut uh, Maker. And um, I also use the Cricut spatula, was very helpful uh, to get these thin pieces up. And I also use this extra large scraper. And then, of course, a pair of scissors is always helpful because we will need some type of a thread to be able to hang our ornament with and I just use this gold thread you can pick that up at the craft stores or use twine or anything like that and you need two brads okay so you need two brads that are going to be able to fit into this hole there's a hole on each end so whatever the size of brad when you go to pick your brads make sure you get one that is going to fit in that hole and will cover up that hole when you put the brad in. Okay, so you'll need two brads. And I also used a little tiny bit of scotch tape, so if you have that handy or some washi tape, I just use that to help, help me um, when I put the brads into this. To adhere these layers together, you can use just a fine tip liquid glue and uh, whatever your preference is. This is a close to my heart uh, liquid glass one. There's glossy accents, there's scotch glue. You just want a fine tipped glue and one that dries clear. So you can either use this or you could use, like I have my, um, my Xyron Creative Station. And so this is like making a giant sticker out of these shapes and it actually helped quite a bit and was a little bit less messy than using liquid glue. So if you have one of these, um, I'm gonna show you how I use this. You know, this was the other option for the glue. The last thing is this glue eraser is very helpful for when you have all these little cutouts and you're putting glue, it'll help you clean that up a little bit better. And I'll show you 
when I use this. So that's it for the supplies. Let's get started and I'll show you how we're going to make this. Find the image set that has these ball shapes on it that we're using in this project demonstration. You will go into Design Space, go over here to Images, and then come up here where the search window is and select Cartridges, which cartridges and image sets are interchangeable, okay, uh, as far as the terminology. And then you'll just right here, you're going to type in Trim the Tree and and then you'll click the little search arrow and it's going to pop up this okay so the three images that are the ball designs are these three this one this one and this one in the designs that I'm showing you for the projects we're using this one and we're using this one okay so for the first one we're going to click on that I'm going to go ahead and show you what I did with this so for the first red, green, and white, and gold ball that I showed you, we're using the file just as it is, okay? So it already comes in size. You don't have to resize it. You can just leave it just the way it is. But I want it, I'm going to ungroup it real quick because I want to go ahead and show you the pieces so you, you know what you're, what you're cutting out, okay? So there is a background piece. In my ball, I made that green. Then there is a top layer piece, and that is what I cut out of red, okay? Now you have the freedom to make them whatever you want. And then there's this white loopy piece, okay? And this piece is the one that has the draw line on it. If you look over here in uh, the layers panel, you'll see that it says draw. That's why you needed that gold pen. So this first ball, we're gonna be doing the drawing, all right? And then there is cut, so it's going to draw this loop on here and then it's going to go back and it's going to cut that shape out all right so that's all you need to do for the very first ornament okay you'll just hit make it and you'll have your papers and you'll be ready to go now i am using the same shape when i show you how to make the um, holographic ball okay but i did a couple of different things here so when you if you want to make the holographic ball all i did was i went through each of the files and I, rem I clicked off of, I found where all of these were located. It'll highlight it over here in your layers panel. And I turned those features off. Okay, I'm just clicking the little eye because I do not want these to cut out. But once you have all of those turned off when you want to make the, the acetate one. I also then remove the draw feature from all of these pieces, okay? So from the loops, I removed the draw feature. So I did the same thing. All I did was I went in and I clicked, turn the draw off. Okay, see how I'm doing that? Super easy. So once the draw features off of these, then that's where I just cut them out of the vinyl. And the background piece I cut out of the acetate, okay? And you'll hear me talking about that as we proceed through the video. But for the final ornament that I showed you guys, I used the other image. So I used this one, okay, this ball here. And I'm gonna go in and say, insert image. Okay, now this one, I did something different. This is for, you can either, if you have a Cricut, explore machine you can do this in where the little draw line is you would use it with a pen okay but if you have the Cricut maker you can go in and change that draw line so I'm going to click on one of the draw lines and I'm going to come over here to line type and that's when I changed it to deboss okay so it's going to change it so then it's going to design space is going to prompt me to use the deboss tool that is the new tool that you can only use with the Cricut maker okay so that's why that one's different but i just changed the draw line to a deboss line because i cut this one out using my Cricut maker let's go put one together now okay now once we have all of our pieces cut out you're going to have a set of six of these so you're going to have a background shape mine is green then you're going to have this top layer mine is red yours may be whatever colors you've selected and then you're going to have this piece which is the one that we did the drawing on okay so we're going to adhere these i've already gotten some of them done uh, but i'm going to show you the two ways that i did this so that then you can decide what is easier for you so you're going to take this shape 
We're going to flip this over and I'm just going to use the liquid glue. And you'll notice that you need a fine tip because you're going to have to put just a tiny amount all the way around because it's really important that you get glue on all the area because when we go to bend this shape into that ball shape, nothing needs to pop up. So then I just laid it on here just like so and then I tap it down so you're just getting the layer on like this okay then you're going to do the same thing for this shape but you're going to flip it over don't do it on the gold side you want to do it or the pin or the pin draw side you want to do it on the other side and I'm having to put a little bit of glue on all of this okay so and then we're going to put this this is going to get layered on top okay so I'm starting down here close to where that one of the circles is down here on the bottom and then I'm just going to press this on and then you're going to let this sit for a minute and let the glue dry make sure you don't have any pieces that are popping up like this little section here I guess I don't have quite enough glue on it so I'm going to have to add a little bit more because when like I said when we go to do this shape we want to make sure that all of these are going to stick so that's using the liquid glue it is pretty messy because my fingers are all sticky now but what I found that I liked using better was using the Xyron Creative Station. Some of y'all may have these. You have, may have them in different sizes. But basically what it is is that it is, a, it is a dry adhesive roller. And when I open this up, all I'm going to need to do, there is, a, there is a roll of adhesive inside the machine. There's a little crank handle here. I'm just going to lay my piece we're going to do this one first. I'm going to lay this in here. Let me see if I hold it this way you guys can see it. I'm just laying this in here, okay? And then I'm pushing it in all the way in. And then I'm just going to crank the handle, okay? And it's going to roll it out the back. And then there is a little paper trimmer right here that then you trim that. Okay, so there's one, and then I'm going to do the same thing with this piece. You just want to be careful when you put it in that you're not bending any of the little edges. So now that you have the, this is the adhesive, it's on this white background, and there is a plastic coating on the top of that. That's why it looks shiny. So what you want to do is you want to rub against your image that, you're, that you want the glue on. So I'm rubbing it down just with my finger. It doesn't take much, and then you're going to peel off that lining. It's just a clear plastic lining. So I'm going to peel this off. Now this is the part that has the adhesive on it, okay? So it's super sticky. You don't need this. We can't reuse it. I'm just going to toss that off to the side. And now I have this piece, and I can just lift this straight up off of here and put it on my background shape. Okay. It's a little bit faster, a, a little bit less messy. This is that uh, adhesive eraser that I showed you. So if you get any extra little adhesive showing, you can always use this and it takes it right up. Now let's, add, let's look at this one. So this one has a lot of cutout on it. Okay. So what you want to do is you want to rub all of those areas and that's going to help you with what people tend to call the sticker boogers um, when you go to use this it won't be quite as much um, adhesive that gets less in, less left in the centers of these if you go ahead and rub it out you're going to take this off just like we did the other one okay now, you can see you're not seeing a lot of the adhesive on there, okay, because it's on the underside of this. And this a little and peel this up, and it'll come right up, but you're going to need to kind of, we don't want to tear it. So I, what I'm doing is I have my finger across the back. This is like a waxy sheet, basically, and this will come right up. And I'm just kind of using my finger across the back to help me pull it up just so I don't tear anything. Now we have this beautiful piece and I'm going to line it up just like I did the other one. Okay, it's going to go right on there. I'm just going to press it down. Okay, and then you may see where there is a little bit of extra adhesive there. Can you see where it's kind of shiny there? All I have to do is use my uh, adhesive eraser 
and it picks that right up. And this works great on um, any like uh, tape runners, that kind of thing. And of course these Xyrons. Now I have this piece on and it's secured and looks great. Okay, so those are the two choices that I recommend for when you're going to adhere the pieces together. And it's just your kind of your preference, whatever you have. Now, um, you will have six of these. Okay, and then what I want you to do is we're going to gently take this and we're going to fold it around. So I kind of just moved, I did kind of just grabbed mine and did them till the holes kind of matched up just to help bend that shape a little bit because as we go to make our ball here in a minute we're going to need these to be bent somewhat don't try to do it with the completely flat because you're not going to end up with a very nice shape now we have all of these are basically curved all right so um, let's start putting this together you will want to have your brads at this point and of course you'll want to have some I'm going to use this gold thread you can use whatever you want and a pair of scissors you'll need that and the rest of this goes pretty simply so what I did was I laid these out kind of in a star shape here like this to give me an idea when I go to put these together you know if they're how they're going to form okay because they're going to start in the center together and then they're going to wrap into a ball and then we're going to hold it together on the bottom now there's probably a zillion different ways to do this this is what i figured out worked the best and it looked the nicest to me so that of course is what i'm going to show you so i'm going to take one of my brads and i'm going to just put it inside the loop here okay I'm going to do the same thing and I'm layering them from underneath okay so I'm just adding them to the back of that brad okay now I'm doing the same thing all the way around for all of these pieces you can flip it over if you need to it's just wanted to give you the idea okay so once you have these in place more or less then you're going to put your brad post down okay and then i kind of maneuvered these back so that they were in that star shape okay like that and then i put a little piece of scotch tape on the center over this over the brad piece just to keep that brad flat and and not spinning more or less because i don't want this brad to spin very much and i'm just using my finger to um, you know kind of press it onto the surface of the paper and across the brad okay so now there's just a little piece of tape little scotch tape over this brad and then you're going to take one of your sides here and you're going to put the brad the other brad goes in and you're just going to slowly go around putting the shape that hole on each of these shapes into the brad okay and you can turn these a little bit so you can get up in there There we go and then I kind of have this pushed open on this side so that I can see the brad on the inside now and I can push it down and I can add some tape if I need to but at this point I don't really need to I just wanted that top piece to not spin and now you have your ornament shape okay that was easy enough and then to make a hanger for this I just took a length of uh, this gold cord but you know you can use uh, twine or anything that you want to use and this is about I grabbed about 12 inches or so and then I'm going to slide it up underneath the brad okay so I slid it underneath the brad I want to make make it even so I'm just going to wrap it underneath that brad again make sure it's secure like this and then I can just tie this at the top here for my hanger so you can make this as big as you want now if you're going to put this on a holiday tree you know you want to make it with a loop if you're going to um, you know you want to hang these you could just make do this and just make one thread and just tie it 
tie the, tie it together so it's like this if you want to hang it from one thread like this or you can you know leave enough that you could make it this a loop so you could put it on a tree hook but that is as easy as it gets to make these now the next ornament that I'm going to show you how to make real quick is going to be you it's a holographic ornament using foil acetate and the new Cricut premium holographic bubble vinyl yes it's so fun to do that look how pretty it is let me show you what all you're gonna have to have to make this of course you're gonna need two brads and you're gonna need some kind of cording or or thread or whatever you're gonna hang it with I'm just using this silver thread you'll need a pair of scissors you'll need a weeding tool your Cricut spatula or scraper rather and you're gonna need some transfer tape I'm just using Cricut transfer tape and then of course you're gonna need the main supplies so the this part the vinyl is using this premium holographic bubble vinyl it just came out it is so much fun and of course you can see I had a had trouble picking out one color so I bought several it comes in a bunch of different colors but it's so pretty guys um, I wish I hopefully you guys can see it but the little there's little circles on here and those circles have holo are holographic and then the background is kind of like a foil so the between the two it's just really extra fun for projects and of course I use the party pink and I'll link that up in the description of the video now the this part the plastic part of this is made using Cricut's foil acetate okay now this one is the pinpoint sampler and that's the one that all of the all of the sheets in here and you get 16 12 by 12 sheets so you have plenty to make a bunch of ornaments this is holographic all the designs on here are like hol are holographic so they have that shiny sparkly look to them really pretty and so there's circles and squares and then I kind of chose this which looks a lot more like dashes I'm not sure if you guys can see that but look how cute that is oh my gosh okay so the pinpoint sampler is the one I made this one with there's also another one called the tailored sampler and it has the instead of it being holographic it's gold and silver and blacks and they're also in circles and squares and splotches and dashes kind of thing so those are the supplies that I use to make the ornament now let me show you how I put it together so I made this one here with the foil acetate and the holographic bubble vinyl but I used the exact same file that I used for the paper one and here instead of where this has when we did the drawing with the gold pen on it and this red trim I didn't I removed that from the file I didn't need it and I also uh, close the eye on the draw line in design space so then it would just cut it out cut out that same design so now I'm going to show you how I weed the holographic bubble vinyl it's so fun look how cute it is I just love it and it's it's even more impressive in person so I'm just going to use my Cricut uh, weeding tool and I'm going to just move this away and this is super easy to weed do have a lot of little pieces in here that need to be weeded and what I think is the easiest way to do this is I'm going to go ahead and cut these apart because I'm going to be applying them separately so I will cut all of these apart okay and then once I have it apart really the easiest way to get these little pieces out is just to bend it over and peel it up with your finger so here's where the point is on these and all I do is I'm just bending it rolling it basically away I have my finger underneath it that's helping me kind of just push it up from the bottom and then those come off super duper easy so now I have this weeded I'll weed all the rest of them as well but let me show you so I've already cut out all the base shapes out of that uh, foil acetate that I talked about earlier this is the holographic one and this is the holographic bubble if you can see the bubbles it's really fun anyway so now we're going to apply this to the front of our piece and I'm just using some Cricut transfer tape and I'm going to lay that right on there just like that and then you want to use your scraper tool and scrape along 
Then I'm going to flip this over, and what I like to do is peel it from the back, and I'm just rolling this right off. This is so easy to do, guys. All right, so now that I have this, I'm going to take one of my shapes, one of my background pieces. I can, I'm going to turn it this way so I can see it a little easier. And then I want to line this up so that it's in the center, and it's in between where the two holes are, okay? And then I'm just going to peel off the transfer tape. Now I'm going to use the same transfer tape for all of the pieces, but I can put it back on the liner while I wait. And now I have this piece is done, and the camera thinks it's really weird. So it's, it's but you can see how holographic it is. It's really cool. Um, all right, so I'm going to finish doing all the other pieces, then I'll be back to show you how to assemble this ornament. So now that I have the the six pieces assembled. Now we're going to put the ornament together. So I'm going to take the first one. This is very similar to how we did the first paper one. So I'm just going to put the where the hole is. I'm just going to put the first brad and then I'm just going to layer each piece on that brad. And this will just take a second. Okay, then once I get these on here, then I want to open the brad up and I'm going to push that down. Okay, and I'm going to add a little bit of tape just to the back over that brad just to help hold it in place. And I, you know, if you need to use your scissors to cut it smaller, but I really just need a little bit just to hold the brad. All right, so what I want to do is I want to take the, I'm going to do the pieces in order that I have them layered on the brad. So I'm going to go with the, the piece that is the closest to the back of the brad here. And I'm going to flip this over and I'm going to put the other brad on there. And then I'm just going to slowly go around the circle here until I get to the next piece. And I'm just going to keep doing this all the way around. And all I'm doing is putting that brad putting the hole in the brad, but it works best if you do it in the order. And then these are pliable enough that it's really easy just to kind of move them out of the way as you need to turn it. And then we have the last piece. And I'm just going to lay that, get that into the brad, the hole. Okay, now once I have them all on there, then I need to close my brad on the inside. So I'm going to close the brad on the inside just by pulling these open just a little bit to be able to do that. And then you have your finished piece. It looks so pretty. So I wanted to show you the other ornament that I made. And this one, I did not curl it as tightly and it is more of a oblong uh, oval shape but this is absolutely beautiful and what I've done here is that this I made using the Cricut Maker new debossing tool okay and instead of using the draw feature on the inside of this design this is the other one of the balls in that cartridge I changed it to deboss. So this is the Cricut True brushed paper, this uh, copper color. And if you can see that, now it's debossed. It, it's very noticeable um, when you see it in person, probably a little harder to see on camera. There you go. That's probably pretty good. But it's debossed and it's absolutely gorgeous. So if you have a Cricut Maker and the new Cricut debossing tool uh, with the quick swap housing, you would be able to use um, any of the papers that I recommend for the debossing tool um, to be able to deboss that line instead of drawing it with the pen like we did in the original paper version that I showed you. Let me show you what papers I got for this. The true brushed paper is what this copper color is that I used. Okay, it's really pretty, but it comes in two different color sets. So there's one that is more these colors here. And then there, and this one's called Elegance. And then there's another set that's called Cool Water. And these are more uh, greens and purples and blues and silver and black. Okay. And these have a beautiful texture to them. 
Okay, you can see the beautiful texture on here. It looks really nice and it debosses really nicely. Okay, so it's one of my favorite papers to use for debossing. So I cut the filigree part of this out using the True Brush paper and then I mounted it on top of the Cricut foil paper. Okay, and this is the classic sampler. So it has red and silver and blue and gold and black and I used black and silver. So I alternated it to give my little ornament here a special shape. Now I'm also thinking looking at more egg shape because of the way I did this one and you could certainly make these for, think about Easter. You could make them in pastel colors and they'd be beautiful to be hanging for, for decorations. Now that you've seen all three of these, which one's your favorite? Be sure and leave me a comment in the description area letting me know which one you like. And also, be sure and subscribe to my YouTube channel because I'll have future tutorials coming out for you guys on all things Cricut. And I really appreciate that. Come join us over in the Let's Learn Cricut Design Space Facebook group or the Cricut Maker with Debbie O'Neill Facebook group. And as always, happy crafting.